Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. A free and viable alternative to Navigraph that is fully integrated with Little NavMap, Pilot to ATC, and VATSIM, not to mention can be used with Monitor or VR. Coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. I first want to apologize for my voice. I'm still getting over the flu, but I really wanted to get some content out for everyone. So I hope you can deal with it throughout the remainder today. In today's video, we're going to go over a completely free application that can be found over at flightsim.to. Links will be down below in the description for that. During the first half of today's video, I will go over all the bells and whistles of this application show you just how easily this is going to integrate with VR and monitor, as well as the pilot to ATC and VATSIM integration. During the second half of today's video, I will go over the download and installation process for the application, as well as some changes that have to be made inside of Little NavMap to make sure there's no conflicts inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. I will then go over how to integrate this with pilot to ATC, Unfortunately, I don't use VATSIM, but there are detailed instructions on the website, which we'll go over as well. If you have any comments or questions throughout the day today, please leave them down below in the comments section, and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Okay, so like I said earlier, this application is completely integrated into Microsoft Flight Simulator. So what we need to do is to go up to the toolbar menu and we're going to click on the little nav map VR toolbar icon. Now don't be misled by the title of the application that it says little nav map VR because yes, this is a very, very powerful application in VR, but can be very handy in monitor as well. So before we start with all the different features of the application, I want to first start by saying you must have little nav map running on your PC for everything to operate properly. More on that in the second half of today's video. But for those of you who have never heard of little nav map, I will post a link down below in the description for a two part series that I've done on how to install it as well as creating your first flight plan. So now let's go over some of the key features of this application. We're going to start by going over all of the icons at the top left first. The first menu that we have here is our flight plan menu, and this will give us our current flight plan that we have loaded in the little nav map application. Now this is going to be especially handy for those of us who are in VR for entering our flight plan in the GPS. But as you see, it gives us all the pertinent information that we're going to need, as well as some flight restrictions. At the very bottom, we have the total distance, our estimated time and route, the amount of fuel, as well as our average winds. Now, keep in mind that the fuel is calculated based on the fuel report that you have set up in the little nav map application. All of that I go over in the two part tutorial series in the description. The next icon over is our settings icon, and this will allow us to know if everything is running properly with the little nav map application. You wanna make sure that all of these say yes to ensure that you have a flawless and seamless integration. Below this, we have some regional settings and these are some settings that we can adjust on the panel itself. So as you see, we have user interface scaling as well as VR scaling. Thank you very much for adding two separate scaling methods because this really makes a big difference in VR. Below that, we have the brightness of the application and everything else below, I simply leave on default. Below this, we have our progress source. So we can use either a little nav map or the simulator to show our progress throughout our flight plan. We can have a choice to show the plane icon, show a clock on our screen, as well as show the wind direction in the very center. Below that, we have our ATC integration. Now, if you're using Pilot to ATC, you need to make sure that you have this ticked. If you're using VATSIM, you need to have this one checked. I'll show you how that's gonna change some things here in just a moment. Below this, in the instrument section, 
This is where we can choose which telemetry data we want to display at the very bottom of this application. Now, if you scroll through these, you'll see a ton of different bits of information that you can display here, and you can really get this thing cluttered up at the bottom. But this is all personal preference, and I suggest to go through each of these and just choose what's going to work out best for you. Once you're done in this menu, we can hit the close. The next icon over is our telemetry data, and this will either show or remove the telemetry data from the bottom of your application. Next to that, we have a Documents tab. We also have the ability to store PDF documents as well as PNG documents in this section. So we can just click on a document. We can then use the mouse scroll wheel to scroll in and out, or we can use our zoom in and zoom out buttons at the very top. We also have the ability to rotate the charts. We can make these charts full screen or we could go back to split screen. Now this is also gonna be very helpful for those of you who are flying outside of the US. I'll get into that here in just a second and explain why I say that. To go back to all of the other documents, simply hit the close button, and then we can see all the other documents that we have in here. Now if I scroll all the way to the bottom of my documents, you will see I have a PNG file. I also wanted to test this because maybe you're not able to download a PDF and you can use the snipping tool that is on Windows. Just go down to your search bar and type in snip and then you can snip or screenshot anything that you want and load it into the documents. Again, I'll get into how to do that a little bit later on. To get out of the documents altogether, we can just click off of the documents tab at the very top. The next tab over is our favorites tab and this will give us any favorites that we have chosen in our favorites list. The last icon at the very top is our ATC icon, and this is where we're gonna be able to integrate with VATSIM and Pilot to ATC. Now, like I said earlier, I don't use VATSIM, so all of the correspondence here was from Pilot to ATC. As you can see in the dialog box below, this is gonna show all of the correspondence between me and ATC, as well as suggested responses to ATC. On the right hand side, this will give us all of our frequencies that we are using to talk to ATC. Now, if we go back over into our settings cog while we have the ATC open, and if we scroll all the way down to VATSIM, you will now see that it's gonna bring up all of the VATSIM frequencies and the controllers for the area in which we're in right now. At the very top of the controllers menu, we also have an option to choose in range controllers as well as all of the VATSIM controllers. So that is awesome, awesome. Let me know down below how many of you fly on VATSIM and how this may help you during your flights. To exit out of this, we can either close over on the right hand side or we can just click on the icon at the very top. So now I want to go over some other really cool features that this application has. For this demonstration, I'll use our current flight plan, and I want to get some information about our arrival airport. To do that, we can double click on the airport. Now keep in mind, you can do this for any airport, waypoint, or VOR that you're going to see on the screen. For instance, if I just double click on this waypoint, you will see that waypoint populate here. But for now, let's go back to the airport. Now I wanna get some information about this airport. So I'm gonna left click on that and it will bring up all of the information you could possibly want about this airport. So we have the name, the elevation, all the various runways, the lengths of the runways, what they're made of. It even tells us the best runways for wind as well as what the winds are on that current runway. Below that in the weather section, we have the VFR METAR information, the wind information, temperatures, barometric pressure, visibility, and if you scroll all the way to the bottom, all the comm frequencies for that airport. Now, if we scroll all the way back to the top of the airport information box, you will see that we have two more tabs to the left of the ICAO. The very top icon will center the map around that particular airport. The icon underneath of that will populate all the documents for that airport 
over on the left hand side. Now keep in mind that the documents are only available if you are flying within the US. If you are outside of the US, that's when we need to take advantage of the documents tab at the very top to bring in all of our charts for any of the airports outside of the US. But if you're within the US, you will have all of these documents at your fingertips right here. To view any of these documents, just single left click on any of them, and that will bring up the document in split screen mode over on the left hand side. Again, we can go full screen just like that and zoom in or out with your mouse. Now one problem that you may run into if you full screen your chart and you have a bunch of documents open here on the right, you may not be able to see the icon to switch it back to split screen mode. So you'll just have to remove your charts and then click on the split screen button at the top. Now one big question you may have here is, are these charts updated? Well, let's find out. Let's click on the ILS and we're gonna zoom in. Now the current date of today is January 7th, 2024. And as you can see here, this chart is good from December 28th, 2023 to January 25th, 2024. So that just goes to show you that yes, this is pulling updated charts for us to view. The other cool thing that this has is a zoomed option at the very top. If you click on zoomed, it will then go into a split screen mode and zoom in on the current airport in which you have highlighted over here on the right hand side. So that's really neat as well. Now, I know I told you earlier that we can also set up favorites. So let me show you how to do that. If we go back to the top and click on the favorites icon, this will bring up all of the recently viewed airports or waypoints. To set that as a favorite, just click on the star and there we go. At the lower left hand corner of the map, we have a couple more icons. Here we can also use these to zoom in or zoom out. But if you're not using a mouse in VR, it makes it very easy to use your controller to click on this. Now, if for some reason you are way off of where your aircraft is, you could then tick on the other icon at the bottom and that will bring your aircraft back into view. At the top, we can also search an ICAO or waypoint. So I will just search PWI and then that will bring up all of the information about that airport right here. Now, the only thing that you're not able to do here is to actually change your flight plan through this application. To make changes to your flight plan, you need to use the little NavMap application on your PC. So now what I want to do is change our flight plan using little NavMap, and let's just see how quick it's going to update inside of the little NavMap VR inside of Microsoft Flight Sim. So let's get that up real quick. All right, so here's our current flight plan in the little NavMap. I'm gonna come up here to KFCS, and I'm gonna set this as our destination airport. Now let's see how quickly it's gonna change over here on the application. There you go. So it refreshed pretty quickly, and any changes will happen almost instantaneously. Now also keep in mind, the only current map that we can display here is the open street map. You don't have the availability to change that around. All right, so now that we have gone through the application itself, let's show you where to get it and how to install it. All right, so we're at flightsim.to. Again, links are down in the description for this web page. Now, this developer has taken a lot of time to put together all the instructions that you need to be able to set up everything for little NavMap, as well as VATSIM and Pilot to ATC. Now, we're going to go through these instructions one by one and show you what needs to be done in Little NavMap to set everything up. If you're familiar with Little NavMap, I guess you're done with the video, and I want to thank you for joining us. But for those of you who are sticking around, let's jump into the process here. So the first thing that we need to do is to download the application, and this will put a zip file on our PC. Once you have the zip file downloaded, you want to extract this into your community folder for Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you're not sure where your community folder is, I'll post the link down below for a simple application that can help you find it. In any case, you will see the mod that I've just installed in my community folder right here. The other thing that you want to make sure that you do is delete 
any previous version of this application before installing it into your community folder. So now that you have the mod installed in your community folder, we can now open little nav map and adjust some of our settings in there. All right, so the first thing we need to do inside of little nav map is to go up to the very top and we're gonna click on the settings cog. This will open all of the options for little nav map. Over on the left hand side, you're gonna scroll all the way down to where it says web server and you're gonna double click there. On the top right of the web server, you are going to select a directory. So we're gonna click that. Now for this, we're gonna select a directory within the new application we just installed into our community folder. So we're gonna find the in-game panels, little nav map, we're gonna double click, and then you're gonna go down to the web folder. Double click there, and then we're just going to hit select folder. Now we have pointed the web server to the proper directory. Now for those of you who are using add-on linker, you would then go to wherever you have the application installed, and then you're gonna find the exact same directory there. Below that, you wanna make sure that your port number still says 8965, and then below that, we're going to hit Start Web Server. The key thing here is to make sure that you start the web server. This way, anytime you open little nav map from here on out, it will automatically start the web server. All right, so now that we have that complete, we need to jump back over on the left-hand side for the menus, and we're gonna scroll all the way up to where it says user interface. We're then gonna left-click that, and there's a couple things in here we need to change. One, at the very top, we need to make sure this says American English, United States, and then you wanna tick the box underneath of that to say use English number and date formats. Once you have that done, make sure it hit apply at the very bottom. And now we're gonna go back over to the left-hand side again, and we're gonna select the units menu. Then over on the right-hand side, you wanna make sure that you have all of these options set exactly as I do here. Once you have those set up, we can then go to the bottom and hit the apply one more time. Now that you have that complete, we have one more menu that we need to change some settings in. On the left-hand side, you're gonna come down and highlight map display labels. You will then go over on the right hand side and at the very top you will see top of map. If we check on the drop down it will bring up all of the options that we have in this menu. You want to make sure that none of these are checked. So if you have these checked make sure they are not checked. Now what they're describing here is this is optional but it does make the map tiles look better. So we're just going to do what they recommend and uncheck those. Once you have that done, again, we're gonna go down and hit the apply button. After you have finished making all these changes, you can then hit the okay button, and you need to restart the little nav map application for all of those settings to take effect. Now, again, I don't use VATSIM, so I'm not gonna be going through the setup process with VATSIM, but they do give us detailed instructions on how to set this up for VATSIM and vPilot. All right, so now that we have set up everything inside a little nav map, there is one more thing I need to go over before we get into how to set up Pilot to ATC. One way that this application is able to bring us all of this information inside of the sim is because there is a companion application that's also gonna be running in the background. So you also need to make sure that you start the companion application so that you're gonna have all of your charts as well as pilot to ATC and VATSIM integration. To start the companion application, you will again locate the in-game panels little nav map mod that we just installed in the community folder, and you're gonna double click that. From here, we're gonna go up to the companion folder, and then here's where you can find the companion application, and all we need to do is to double click on this. Once you double click on this, it will auto start minimize down below in your taskbar. If I open up the taskbar, you will see the companion application is running right here. Now, one thing you can do to make sure you don't forget to start the companion application each time is by using a program called add-on linker. Within that application, we can have it set to auto start any application we want once we start up Microsoft Flight Simulator. 
So let me show you how to do that real quick. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with add-on linker, I will also post some links down in the description for a tutorial series I did on this as well. To auto start the companion application with add-on linker, we'll go up to the top and click on the settings cog on the left hand side. Once here, we're going to go up to additional options. And here is where we can add any program we would like to start with Microsoft Flight Simulator. To do this, we are going to click on the add button. You're going to click on the three dots here. And then you will find the little nav map in game panels mod that we have just installed. Double click there, double click the companion, and then we are going to click on the companion app and then hit open. You will then have the application string appear right here. Below that, you want to close when sim closes, and then we can hit OK. Make sure the box is checked on the left hand side and you are all set to go. You can hit the OK button and now when you start the simulator using the icon at the top, it will auto launch the companion application and you won't have to think twice about it. The next thing we'll go over is how to import documents into the documents tab of the little nav map VR application. To do this, we're first going to locate the mod that we have just installed in our community folder. And then we're going to double click there. We're then going to go up to the companion app and double click that. And then we're going to go into the documents tab. Here's where we're going to place all of our PDFs or PNGs that we might take. Now you could pretty much put anything in here. So if you want to put pictures or I don't know, whatever you want, uh, if you want to take, say, a Google shot of a particular airport, you can do that as well. So let me show you how that's going to work. For this demonstration, I will be using skyvector.com. Links for this will also be down below in the description. So I would just hover over the airport, right click, and then I can bring up any PDF that they have available. So we'll bring up the airport diagram. Once here, we can click on the download button at the top right, and then you can either select the documents folder inside the in-game panels or you can just save it directly to your downloads folder, hit save, and then just open the downloads folder and drag and drop that right into the documents. Now let's say you want to screenshot a Google map picture of a particular area. Let me show you how we're going to do that. So let's say I want to store this portion of the sectional chart here that you see on the screen. So to do this in a PNG format, we're going to come down to the search bar and just type snip. When you do that, at the very top, you'll see the snipping tool application. And now all we need to do is to hit the new. We can highlight everything that we want to snip or screenshot. From here, just go up to file, down to save as. And again, you can either pick the location of the documents file in the little nav map VR application, or we can just save it to our downloads. We'll name it test two, and then hit save. Again, go to your download section where you just downloaded, and then we can drag and drop that file directly into the documents folder of the little nav map VR application. If you have any questions about this, please let me know down below in the comments section. The last thing I want to do is jump into the pilot to ATC application and show you how to set that up to integrate with the little nav map VR application. So the first thing that we need to do is to open the pilot to ATC application. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with this ATC application, this is a voice application. Hello, computer. Just use the keyboard. That is very useful in VR. So you can communicate with ATC with only using your voice. Now, keep in mind, this is not AI controlled. There's no monthly subscription. And I'll post links down below in the description for Pilot ATC. I have no affiliation, so I just want to throw that out there. So once you have the application open, we need to go down to the config box over on the right hand side. This will open up our Pilot to ATC configuration. From here, we want to take on the speech menu at the very top. And in this menu, we're going to go all the way down to where it says conversation text file path. 
Now this is where it can become a little bit confusing. We need to point this to a directory within that newly installed application we just put in our community folder. To do this, we're gonna tick on the three dots over here on the right, and then you're gonna find the newly added mod to your community folder for the little nav map in-game panels. We're gonna double click on that, and then we're gonna go up to the companion folder. We're gonna double click on that. We're gonna find the data folder. We're gonna double click there. But here's where it can get confusing because if you do not do this, it's not going to work properly. Trust me, I've done it. At the very bottom, we need to change the file name. So you need to change the name to pilot to ATC text. Then you can hit the save button. Now for me, I already have this here, so I'm not going to replace it. But for you, it would just automatically save and you're good to go. Once you have that done, make sure that you tick on the Enable Conversation Text File Path. And from here, you're good to go. We can hit the Configure button, and you can then use Pilot to ATC as normal, and it will now be fully integrated into the Little Nav Map VR application. Well, that's going to finish us up for today, folks. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on the channel. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section. And if you found today's video useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.